If you are interested in becoming a college professor, specifically in musical theater or theater, then I am going to take you through all of the four steps that it's going to take from start to finish and what you need to become a college professor. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Ashley Espinosa. I have an MFA in musical theater and I'm a college professor, an educator, an actor, a director, along with you, I'm sure a multi hyphenate artist, which is what I'm really cultivating here on my YouTube channel. If this video is helpful for you, please consider giving it a like, a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos from me, I have new videos coming out every single week. Go ahead, click the subscribe button, the bell notification so you don't miss any more videos. Step one in becoming a musical theater college professor is degrees and experience. Now, ideally, I would suggest getting a master's degree minimum. So an MA, an MS, an MM, or an MFA. I have an MFA. I see most of the time the postings do say MFA minimum. If I were you, I would suggest getting an MFA if you if you haven't already gotten a master's degree, but really the minimum you need is a master's degree to be able to submit that application and have the degree requirements. Now, if you're getting an MFA, make sure that it's specific in your field. So an MFA in dance, in musical theater, in acting, in directing, in music music directing and design and stage management, something that is specific for you of what you want to teach at the college level. Now, something else to consider is experience. In our profession, they typically will say an MFA or a master's and experience working at the professional level. That means experience in your field of expertise, either choreographing, directing, um, teaching musical theater classes, being a performer, an actor, having professional experience already on your resume. Also experience in teaching, many times they will be looking for someone that already has experience teaching at the college level, whether you were a visiting professor or an adjunct professor working just part time. There are some colleges, depending on which one you're applying for, that you could just have a bachelor's and experience that's going to be equivalent to maybe the training that you would see, receive in a master's program. I've even seen some colleges that will accept folks that don't have any degrees, but that have a really high level of experience in our field, either a Broadway director or a performer, or they've already been teaching somewhere for quite a long time. So it really just depends. Again, you really want to consider getting that highest level of degree in our field, which really is an MFA but it's your choice. You have to make the decision that is right for you. The second step is going to be your application materials. And I would suggest that you have these ready to go. You can start working on them today, right now, even before you apply. You're going to want a cover letter, a CV or a curriculum vita. Think of it as your academic resume, your teaching philosophy, a statement of diversity, you will want to have three to five letters of recommendation. If you don't have them in the paper form, you still want to make sure you have the contact list. So three to five folks with their name, their address, their phone number, the school address, their phone number, their email, how they can be contacted. You want to have copies of your transcripts. I would encourage you to get both official and unofficial so you have them both ready to go. Sample syllabi is often asked. So if you've never taught at a college level before, I would really encourage you to go ahead and create a syllabus of a class that you would want to teach. Just create it as if you were going to teach it as an example. And the last element that I would really encourage you to do is have a website. A website is extremely important. It's your online home. It's often sometimes the first thing they're going to do is check out your website or Google you or try to find out more about you versus what's just on the paper. So a website is a great way for you to say, here's my work. Here's what I do really well. I, I can't wait to work with you. The third step to becoming a musical theater college professor is to find those jobs. You have the degree, you have the experience, you have your materials ready. Now, how do you find jobs in academia? The most common place is going to be higheredjobs.com. It's a website, it's free. I would encourage you to jump on there, create a profile and set up for the weekly or daily emails for positions in your field and what you specialize in. So that way you always know what's happening. This is really for public colleges, 
universities, community colleges, private colleges are on there as well, but it's a great way for you to find jobs out there. There are a few other places that you can find, but really higher ed jobs is what everyone utilizes. Another option you have is to discover the schools in your area that you want to teach at and look at their HR job postings. Sometimes they'll just post it on their HR page first before going to higher ed jobs. So you can check out their, their personal HR page for that school as well to see what postings they might have. The fourth step into becoming a musical theater college professor is going to be the interview process. So you have the degrees and the experience, you have your application materials, you found a job, you have submitted for that job. Now what happens next? The first step after you've applied for these jobs, and there are hundreds of applicants that apply every single time for the jobs when they're posted because our business is so niche in our industry that the jobs are a little bit fewer and far between, um, the first step is going to be typically questions. So they're going to then select and narrow down the pod, and then they're going to say these 10 or 15 or 20 people, we'd like for you to answer these five questions and you will type it up and you will submit it back to them. Typically the questions are going to be, you know, what's your philosophy on teaching? What could you bring to the program? What, depending on your expertise, what musical would you direct and why? What would be some new initiatives you would want to create? How would you be inclusive to all folks? Um, there are many different questions they could ask depending on the school and the program. You would type them up and you would send it back to them. If you're selected then to the next step, oftentimes it's going to be a phone call or a video interview on Zoom or Skype. So they will then either call you or set up with an entire committee, a phone call or a Zoom session, where they will then ask you more questions and kind of get to know you more on a, a deeper level and continue to ask you questions and have a conversation with you to see if you're the right person for them and if that you're going to fit in the program that they're really cultivating and creating at that school. The next step, if you're then moved on to the almost final category here, is going to be an actual on-campus visit. Now, really, I'm specifically talking about full-time positions. If you're talking about adjunct or part-time positions, they're going to be um, uh, less strenuous on the interview process. Typically, it's just one person interview, really short and simple. But for a full-time position, there's a lot of other weighing elements happening. So they will typically have you come to campus for a couple of days, fly you in, or if you live in the same state, have you come to campus. You will be then be doing interviews with the entire faculty, interviews with the dean or the chair, sometimes the president of the school, depending on how big your school is. And you will also be asked to teach a few classes, give teaching demonstrations, and continue to talk and discover what's available on the campus, if the campus is right for you, if the program is right for you, and they're really looking for someone that's going to fit what they're trying to create. So I always tell people, if you don't get the job and you're down to the final on-campus interview and there's really two or maybe three of you, remember it's not about oftentimes you, it's about do you fit the program? Are you the right person for what they're looking for? So it's often more than your credentials or your experience. So keep that in mind that the program not only has to be right for, for, for you, but it has to be a mutual fit. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them below. You can reach out to me on my website as well. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people that are trying to create their materials and update them. And I have tons of specifics about how to make your packet work for you so you stand out for your unique self. So if you need anything, let me know. I will put all the links down in the descriptions. If this video is helpful for you, please give it a like, a thumbs up, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos. I have new videos coming out. I have a few different series, um, actions for actors. I have Canvas tutorials for teachers that are working online, performance videos. So keep an eye out. New videos coming at you every single week. All right, I'll see you at the next video. Bye.